Now, could we apply this to this monster over here? This is the Professor Pyraminx. And you can see, of course, the major difference between these guys uh -huh. is that um, instead of being a one, two, three layer, this is a one, two, three, four layer. Counting this is a five layer, but like I say, that's not much going on there. So let's scramble this and see what happens. Alakazam. And it's scrambled. So now we have ourselves a very legitimately hard pyramid puzzle. Not like the Pyraminx. Master Pyraminx was fun. Um, but really, now we're kind of getting more into the hardcore type puzzles. Uh, the first thing to notice is the expansion of our pieces. Uh, these are still the same, but now our edge pieces have expanded. We now have two versions of the species that um, we had been talking about. Um, we have the inner edges. Instead of just one of them, there's now two. The inner edges being where the base articulates with the middle triangle. And now we have three of the outer edges where the base is facing the outside. What we also see is similarly the middle triangle has expanded. Instead of one piece, like here, like here, uh, it's now divided into four pieces, which makes it even more challenging. So we're going to be using though the same strategies with maybe a little bit of variation. First thing, put these guys back in just to get us going. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to put these in. These are already here. Is a green one here ready for us? No, we don't see a green one here. It's over here, so we just have to turn these guys to meet it. And then here's the two blues. Turn the blues in so we have all of these faces the same. So far, so good. So far, it's the same. Now, the other step that I would do is I actually want to put these middle triangles into configuration. What I don't mean is solving it yet. I do save that for the end. But before, when I didn't really pay attention to any of this until the end, I do want to put the middle triangle um, in the right place. You don't need to. You can actually solve it the same way by doing our R, U, R prime, U prime, turning it from here as R and here as U. But you run the risk of potentially having a very bad situation where you have one that's in the right place, but the others aren't, which will make it, you'll have to sort of redo things and I'd rather not deal with that hassle. So this is already in place over here and it's really just a matter of maneuvering around. So find the blue one, here's the blue, we'll just move that up here. Oh, actually the blue goes here, so we'll move that here. It was as simple as that. So blue, green, yellow, and red. So it's going to be pretty easy to see which side is, is which. So the first step, just like with this, is we're going to put in what I call the skeleton, which means we're going to place these uh, inner edges first. We do it the same way, but we're going to make more use of that crisscross strategy because we don't want to bump these middles out. I want to maintain that as best I can. That crisscross strategy was if I wanted to, say, move this up to here, then after moving it up to here, I had to move it again within another plane that still contained that piece. So if I want to move this up to here, I can go turn and then move it again from here, turn, and then down, turn, and turn. The overall effect is moving these guys around without affecting this or, you know, other pieces potentially. So I'm going to start off with the green side, and I'm going to want to put the green and yellow in. So let's find a green and yellow, green and yellow. Green. Here's a green and yellow. So I'm going to move this into configuration. And this is the opposite side here, so I'm going to move it once more like this. So this green and yellow has to move up to here. But if I do that, I'm going to mess this center up. So I'm going to do that crisscross pattern, basically moving it from this angle here, and then I'm going to move it again from this side here. So what that's going to look like is down, across, and then take it back, up, and back across. The overall effect is I didn't touch this, and I place my green and yellow here. And we'll just move this back. So it might take some deconstructing, doing the algorithm and reconstructing, finding our way home as it were. So let's do the other green and yellow, because this one has two. Here it is over here, 
and I've got to somehow move this into here. Well, I'm gonna move this like so, because now I can move this into place over here. Now I don't wanna bump this out, this center piece out, so I'm gonna do my crisscross pattern again. So I'm gonna move it in here, then I have to move it again from from this from this plane to move it here. So I moved it in, then we'll say up, and then back and down. And then we'll just move this back down here. So middle still here, and I place my green and yellow, green and yellow. My technique is basically I'm gonna do this whole side here and then hit the bottom, hit the red. You saw how easy that was to do with this guy. Might be a little more challenging here. So now we do the yellow and purple, or blue, or this color here. Now we'll call it blue. Uh, so find the yellow and blue, yellow and blue. Here's the yellow and blue. This moves up here. Um, I have to do another crisscross so it's gonna be moving in this plane here, and then this plane. Uh, I don't wanna mess this up, but I didn't put anything here, so I don't mind messing this up. Although notice, this blue and green is in place. See over here, um, this is blue and green, this is in place. So I actually don't want to move it from this plane, per se. So what I'm gonna to do to protect it is I'm gonna move this red side up like this. So the overall effect here is this will come up, across, and then down and back. Then I'm gonna move this back down. Overall effect, I move this in, didn't touch this, and I didn't even ruin this guy either. So let's do the other one yellow and blue, find the other yellow and blue, I'm sorry, orange and blue, other orange and blue, which is right over here. So let's move this into configuration. I have to move it over here. So this guy is gonna move up to here. Um, what I can do is once again, move my bottom side, my red side up, so I don't ruin any of the good work that I just did. So up and across, and down and back. Move this red down and there it is. So this is in place. I'm gonna move this back. So blue, this blue and green is here already. I've been protecting that. Now the other blue and green. Let's see, where is it? Right here. Blue and green. So I'm gonna move this into configuration here and I wanna move this up. Now, by moving this up, I'm not destroying this, and I'm not destroying anything that I did here. So this is the unique situation where I just need to move this up. But I think you get the picture where if I had to um, move it from somewhere else, then I can move the bottom side. And that's why I'm putting these guys in first so I can sacrifice the bottom side. So I've got my blue and greens in, green and yellow, yellow and blue. So now the red side, how are we gonna do that? So all the reds are down here, they're just not in the right configuration. Anything that's already in, and no. So it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. All right, so let's do, let's do the uh, green and red side first. So green and red, where's the green and red? Here's green and red. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is move this up here, and I wanna move this down um, for the green and red. The problem is, is if I move this down, I'm gonna ruin, if I move this down here, I'm gonna ruin this blue and yellow side. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is once I move it down, I've gotta move it down from this side too, but I don't wanna ruin my green and orange. So how am I gonna deal with this? You guessed it, let's move this red one up. So we'll move this red one up. So this will come up here for the purposes of um, not ruining that. So this crisscross pattern to move this down is gonna be down and down, then up and up. And then we move this back down here and we move this 
back down here. End result of that is we put this green and red in, and we didn't touch any of these guys, didn't ruin any of these. So we're going to follow suit, just a matter of deconstructing, doing the algorithm, and reconstructing. Green and red now, let's find the other green and red. The other green and red is here. So same kind of thing, I'm going to move this up for the purpose, oh, actually, that's not going to work. What, I'm, what this has to do is this has to move up like that, as you can see. But I don't want to ruin this side. So what I'm going to need to do is I have to move it again from this plane, this plane here, which will be this guy over here. So that I don't ruin this side, and as I've not worked on this side yet either, this red moves up so that I can exchange this side with it. So the overall effect here, up to put it in, down, then down, up. And that puts that in and move this down. So I think you get the picture, green and red, all that's put in. Now sometimes just by doing this, just like we saw with this puzzle, is the rest can correct itself. But let's see if that happened. No, it didn't happen. So, well, this red, this red and blue is in place. So why don't we focus on this then? How about the other red and blue? Other red and blue is over here. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I'll have to move this up like so to move this down to here. Now, what can I sacrifice? When I put this down, I'll end up potentially ruining this guy, which is not what I wanna do. So I'm gonna move this up and move this down. Um, how about here? Well, I can't move this up because I just put this in. So what I'm gonna have to do at this point is have a sacrificial lamb and just accept the fact that I'm gonna be blasting out one of the things that I put in. But that's what I'm gonna be using towards the end in order to do some of my final solves. So I'm gonna move it down like this, down, and just move it from this plane too. So down, then up, and up and move this down here. The overall effect is I have both of my blues in here, but I blasted this one out. And I put my blue and green somewhere down here. But that's okay because now what I can do is the very next one that I'm gonna do, put in, is the yellow and red. So let's just move our yellow and red into position. which is actually here. So I'm gonna move this down to here, which just so happens to coincide with this that I put down. Once I put, what? Oh, no, actually, actually it does. So I'm gonna put this down over here. Once I do that, I'm gonna to have to do another sacrificial lamb as it were, but not this guy. Um, if I could somehow exchange it with this, that would be good, but I'm not gonna be able to do that. So I'm just gonna to have to exchange it with this guy over here. So we're gonna go down, down, up, up. Um, there, that's, that's in there. So that put that in and we'll move this back. So this was placed and I substituted it for this. So this is the other red one. So this will be the next one that I'll go for. Now you don't have to pay too much attention to what you've taken in and out. Just keep plugging and chugging. So red and Yellow, uh, I just need to put the other red and yellow in, so this is gonna come down here. I'm gonna try to exchange it with something that I blasted out. So when this goes down here, I'm gonna exchange it for something that's above in this plane. But do I have something here that got blasted out? Well, there's this. This yellow and green obviously doesn't really belong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this guy, if you can picture it down here, and the reason that I'm doing that is because as I'm moving this down, I'm gonna to have to move it within this plane. Which means I can move it up. So just to reiterate then, I had to think about this a little bit. Uh, this guy doesn't belong, this green and yellow. And I have to move this in. So it's gonna move in this plane. And to do my crisscross, I then have to move this plane. So I'm just positioning this so that it gets moved from this plane. And I'm gonna do that by moving this, by moving this down. By moving this here, it's actually gonna be able to move 
within this plane, as you can see. So the overall effect is going to be this comes down and up, then up and down. And I'm going to carefully put this back. So what I did is I put this in and I exchanged it for this guy. So this, these guys are now all in and these guys are in. Now that just kind of snuck up on me, but that's how it works. Just try to exchange what you can and exchange back. And there's enough overlapping of the sides here to where you're going to be able to do that. So you can see what we've done is we've actually placed what I call the skeleton. See, doesn't it look like a fish bone over here? All of these edges are now placed.